Morning everybody, Gator with eSells eBikes. And if you have purchased the five star to dual star upgrade, today we're gonna show you how to put that all together. We are going to show you how to do the conversion of a five star to a dual star with the rear battery. For the fork, go to our dual crown fork video all the tools and the procedures are listed in there. Next, we're gonna show you how to do the rear rack change out to make it a dual battery bike. In your kit, you should have a battery balancer, a jumper wire. What this wire does is takes you from your battery down into the battery balancer. You should have a rack brace attached to your rack. You should have a bracket for your tail light. You should have your battery and the keys. If any of those are missing when you get that, please call and let us know so that we can get you the pieces needed to be able to do your conversion and get on your bike rolling immediately. The tools we'll be using today for the rack change out is a 7 30 seconds drill bit and a drill just a piece of string little string line a phillips screwdriver a pair of wire snips an eight millimeter combination wrench and a 10 millimeter combination wrench a number five and a number four allen these are the tools needed for the rack assembly for the fork change out you can look up our video on the dual crown fork and that will list all the tools needed to do the fork exchange as well to start with we're going to need to remove this front battery with our front battery removed we can now access the two screws and remove this bottom cap and we'll be able to install a battery balancer and hook up all the new wiring so that the bike will run off of two batteries at the same time. But in order to do that, we've got to access this cap. Do note, when I remove those screws, we have a flat one and a pointy one. This pointy one always goes down into the down tube. If you put it in here, you're gonna put the screw right into wiring behind it. Never put the pointy screw into the frame. We're gonna need to undo this front battery connection. If you don't have enough slack to pull it out and do this, don't worry. We're gonna spin the bike upside down and show you how to get to this connection and how to undo everything. We have a rack that makes it a little bit easier. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know if you're turning the bike upside down, make sure you protect your display and put some foam down to protect your handlebars and rack. Okay, next, we need to cut any zip ties holding all this wiring in so we can start unplugging stuff. You're just going to want to go ahead and disconnect everything that you can that's in here so you have nothing in your way. This long one here is your wire harness for the front. This is your front battery coming up and then down into the next channel. With everything out of your way, we can pull this, disconnect. Now that this is disconnected, we're ready to change the rack out and be able to run your new wiring. Okay, now we'll go ahead and undo the rack. And once the rack is off, we'll be able to start exchanging parts. Okay. 
before we can pull the rack, we need to undo the wiring for your tail light. Just be very careful. Come and snip the zip ties free and unplug your existing tail light. The tail light we will be switching from your old rack to your new. Also very important, all of the nuts and bolts you take off, save. You need those to put it back together. With the rack removed, we'll remove the tail light so that we can transfer the tail light to your new rack. We're gonna remove your rear battery from your new rack and place that off to the side for now. And we're gonna install your tail light onto your new rack. Now we have our tail light changed over and we're ready to install this rack onto your frame. If you notice, your old fender bolt hole in your new rack, the holes aren't lining up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let the air out of the tire. We're just gonna dry fit these four screws so that we can mark our new hole for the fender. You will have to drill a new fender hole for this to work. Now we're just going to take a piece of masking tape. I'm pushing the fender down. Masking tape is going to go on the fender where the hole is. So we can mark where we need to drill. We have a mark place. We'll remove our screws from the dry fit of the rack, drill a hole, and now we'll be able to mount this rack and install the battery. Okay, we have our hole marked where it goes, and the existing hole here is already in a straight line. So as long as you keep that centered with your mark, the rack will be aligned properly. I've lit the air out of the tire and I'm just taking a little board. Now I can't drill through the rack into my tire. If you drill into your tire, that's not covered under warranty. I'm using a 730 seconds bit. And now we have our new hole. And now you see why I put a board in there to protect that tire. Here's a little trick for you. It was hard enough getting this little guy off the first time, putting it back on and accessing it again can be a bit of a pain. Here's my trick. I reverse it, have the head facing down in the tire area and with the tire deflated, it's very easy to access your hands in there and if you put this screw on first before any of those rack bolts it will save you a world of hurt and you can see how much easier it is to be able to access the bolts and everything to put it back together With our rear rack fender bolt attached, we can now put the bolts on to align the rack. Before all four of these bolts are fully tightened down, I'm gonna make sure our rack to frame bolt lines up and we can secure that. Our rack to frame bolt is secured. We're gonna make sure the fenders align properly and then we'll tighten down our four rack bolts. Once the rack is tightened down, 
then we'll be able to put in our battery balancer connect that and connect both of our batteries okay we're gonna go ahead since we're already at the rack reconnect our rear light and just secure the wiring with a couple cable ties Okay, here's a little trick for you. Here's your battery balancer, and this is what is allowing both batteries to run at the same time. The single side is output to the controller, and the double side is input from the batteries. You will also see that they were, they're keyed differently. Front battery, back battery does not matter. Here's our controller power wire. As you see, it's not quite long enough to get down there to make the connection. So what's easiest is take a string line, drop it down the channel, And now what I'm going to do is our battery balancer, the controller connection, now I've got a string line hooked to it, so I can pull it up, and here it is right here. I'm just going to reach in with a pair of needle nose. Pull that out, and I'll be able to make the connection. Oh, well, look at that. We didn't even need the needle nose. Now our controller has power going to it. We'll just get this string line out of our way, hopefully. I'm going to go ahead and use a cable tie. To secure this connection also called a zip tie there we go now our power connection to power the controller and the bike is made clean that wiring off and now we pull that up through and here's the rest of our battery balancer we're going to take our front battery connection, loop that from this top channel or bottom channel once the bike's right side up, push it through. There's our front battery connection. Now we're going to take our jumper wire and we're going to run that down into the frame as well. And lo and behold, there's our rear battery connection. Like I said, the system doesn't care which connection is which connection. Front, back, back, front. It will not make a difference because this is a bike that cannot read front and rear battery individually. So it's just looking for input. Now that those are run, we can pull our connections, stuff everything down up inside of the frame, and you'll be able to see that a bit better when we spin the bike back over. Next, we're gonna make all of these connections we undid and reconnect them. There's our front wire harness connection. We're going to take all that excess wiring, tuck it up into the frame of the bike. Get it out of your way. The less wiring you have exposed, the less chance there is for something to catch it and damage it. Boom! Here's our rear tail light connection. Connected, tucked away. 
This connection here is for our pedal assist. This is a yellow triangle, so this is a cadence system. If you had a torque sensor, this would be a round black connection. Now our pedal assist is reconnected. All of this wiring is nice and neatly stacked away. So we'll go ahead and use a zip tie to pull all that stuff together and tight, nice and clean. With all of our wiring here, nice and neat. We'll go ahead and spin the bike back over, make the final connections, stick our batteries in, and do what we do best, ride. Okay, our battery balancer wiring and all of that, as you see, is pushed past this point. As we put this bottom cap on, I don't have to force anything down. It goes all the way, stops at the frame design so we know everything's in and out of the way. As always, pointy screw goes down, never into the frame. If you start with your down screw, it'll pull this whole assembly down tighter so that your flat screw going into the frame lines up way easier than trying to put that in first. The only thing we have left to do is our rear battery connection. It is keyed. Make sure arrow to arrow lines up. Plug that in. We'll secure it to the frame with a couple cable ties. All of our connections are made. The bike is back together. Now it's time to put the batteries in and test everything out. The bike ran and worked off the front battery alone before. And it should as well now. Front battery in place. The bike powers up. So we know that that front battery connection is good. I'm now going to remove the front battery. And we're going to do the same thing with the rear battery. Now we're going to test the rear battery. Insert. Lock. This rear battery has a very short connector and the reason for that is everything inside of this is made out of metal so that when this battery goes in it's secured and in place and there's the advantage of these shorter receivers and with the receiver being shorter it now brings the battery weight more forward over the center of the axle. Rear battery in only. Bike powered up. We know the rear battery is providing output with no issues. Last thing to check. We have the front battery in. And the bike powers up with both front and rear battery. No issues. Everything's good. We don't have any shorts or anything. Okay, we have now successfully made a five-star single battery into a dual battery bike. And if you're doing the front fork changeover as well, just watch our video on the dual crown fork installation. It goes through everything on how to install that. Please keep the questions coming and we'll keep bringing the answers. As always, as Mr. Cleveland says, don't forget to wear your helmet.